Hello, I'm Joe Agresta from Ichabod Crane High School. And I'm Brandon Dory from Troy High. I used to go to School 14. And uh, our demonstration is about the theremin and the oscillators and how waves relate to using the theremin. So we have, um, before we show you the theremin, we have two um, experiments to kind of show you about oscillators and waves. So the first one we have here is we have a spring, and then we have um, a little box here that holds um, three, is it three or four masses? Three, yeah, four. Well, four. Oh, there's four. In total. So that holds masses, and we're going to show you how it, how it oscillates. So um, Joe here has a ruler and a stopwatch, and we're going to measure um, how, um, how far um, it, how or, often, uh, how, how, how quickly it oscillates. Yeah. So, start off with a large amount of mass. You elongate it to approximately 20 centimeters, which is almost to the floor. Ready with the stopwatch? Mm -hmm. Okay, ready, set, go. It's 10 seconds or more. 10. That was 10 oscillations. All right, so it's about um, 11 and a half seconds. For 10 oscillations? For 10 oscillations. So, so right. now we're going to try it with less weight. We're going to take out a couple blocks. And to make sure we're adding the same amount of energy, we're going to make sure we long get about. 20 centimeters again, so down to 10 here. Ready? Go. Go. Alright, so you can see this, that was 7 seconds, so um, when you have um, less mass, um, it oscillates quicker. So. so, next to show you another oscillator, we're going to switch to Pendulum. Pendulum 2 swings like a wave between, well, its maximum height and. Should we just do this on here? Um, you can just move it to the side. Uh, I can can tell. It. <laughs> okay, I guess you can't move it to the side. Huh? Might just be easier to take Why don't you just hold the pendulum? Um, I kind of want it. So basically, we're really doing that. <laughs> we're going to talk about how between the bottom of the spring, when it's elongated, to when it reaches the top, it's constantly oscillating in a wave-like form. So if you plot the position of the mass over time, you see something like uh, a transverse wave, like. Right. Okay. So, the wave kind of looks like Alright, so next we'll move to pendulum. So, at uh, total height. So you may not be in the, in the best place for this experiment. Oh, okay. I'll hold this side. Oh, well, you don't have to take the spring off. Sal, you hold the other side off. Alright, so uh, again, we're going to need this not for much. So we're going to count how many times at this length it takes for the pendulum to swing back and forth in 10 seconds, let's say. Mm -hmm. Alright, so ready? Yep. Go. So it made about four and a half swings <laughs> in the 10 seconds, so we're going to try again, but this time we're going to approximately half point.
So that time it was about six and a half full swing. And we can try one more time with the length even smaller up around uh, just a few a few centimeters. So ready? Yep. Go. So that was about 13, so it was even more as the length decreased. Basically what we're trying to show you here is that um, if you change the properties of an oscillator, you can change the wave you get by changing how fast it oscillates or its other properties to get a desired effect. So um, the theremin basically works in the same way as changing the mass of the spring or changing the length of the pendulum and that you're changing some of its properties so then you get a desired effect which in this case is the noise. <laughs> so. so right now we'll uh, make sure you know what the works. So you guys probably don't know what this is but this is a theremin and this is kind of everything we were talking about earlier is leading up to the theremin. So, um, you can see here, when I move my hand closer to this, it starts to make a sound. So when I, but if I put my hand here, it doesn't work. But if you kind of, kind of move them both together, um, and kind of what we're talking about earlier with waves is. Um, out of phase waves, but um, so here's a normal wave. It's, and you can see here this wave is a little a little different. And it is um, should I say like this is a sine the wave difference this is a cos um, wave cosine? No. Or? It's the difference between the waves that creates the effect, I guess. Basically in the theremin there is an oscillating signal, well a pair of them, and when they're different that's what creates the noise. So when you move closer to the theremin, you're changing the properties of the theremin and changing one of those waves. So as one of those waves changes, the sound is made because you are changing it. <laughs> and so the main connection with the theremin is um, what other applications we might be able to use it for in the future. So in the field of smart lighting, we thought that maybe we could use theremin-like technology to make lighting sensors for the future, or maybe ways that you could walk into a room and all the lights could come on for you without having to tell them to, or ways that I could tell that you're still in the room so the lights stay on. But in this way, the theremin could be a possible future to light sensors. So is you guys probably know the clapper and probably motion sensor lighting and stuff like that. So. The so thing this has in common is you move more closer, it changes. So that's kind of how a light sensor works. You move your sensor, you move your hand closer, and it's a difference in the way that, um, that, that changes it. So that's just kind of how it works.